Hey y'all, Irix guy here, and is the Rolex Submariner the best watch, and why? So let's go ahead and take this puppy off here, and we're going to talk about it again. Nothing on this channel is uh, is filtered, and you know I just tell you what I think. So if you like this, you do. If you don't, you don't. Share your opinions below. I'm not a dictator. Speaking of dictators, something I want to always do is give a shout out to Archibald Chesterfield III, AC3, Archie Luxury. If you haven't checked out his channel, check it out. He is a wealth of knowledge. I've been watching his videos since I started. Uh, actually, I've been watching his videos since I had my first real watch, which was the Omega Seamaster 300M Precoaxial. And then I found him on, uh, on YouTube and been watching his content ever since. I mean, he knows he knows wristwatches inside and out. Rolex Mariner, it's just called the Rolex Mariner. A lot of people call it the No Date or the ND. And obviously, this this particular timepiece has no date. See, there's no date on it. It's just the time. And this has a ceramic bezel. This is the 40 millimeter reference 114060. So at the time of filming this video. Rolex has come out with a newer reference of the Submariner. I think it's 41 millimeters, but it looks very similar. There are some subtle differences. I don't have one of those, or I would do a comparison video. But a few things about this, and I got this, I think it was 2013. Bought it in, uh, in, in Cayman, in the British West Indies. And it's just been a really great, really great timepiece. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. And first of all, I don't know how well you can hear that. You may have to turn your speakers up. Actually, I'm going to take it off camera and put it right beside my mic. So the bezel action on the Submariner is quite possibly the smoothest bezel, bezel action on any timepiece. Not only does it sound smooth, but it's 120 clicks. So you know, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. When you get to the 30 minute mark, that's 60 clicks, and then you go 60 more. So it's 120 clicks. Really, really smooth bezel action. The bezel is ceramic, so it shouldn't fade. It shouldn't, uh, well, I mean, unless you hit it really hard, and I've run into walls wearing this thing, man, it's been fine. But if you hit something kind of sharp and hard with the right amount of force, I guess you possibly could crack the ceramic bezel. I've never had it happen. It's pristine. Uh, the only thing that I've got, that little, uh, the little glow in the dark, the little pip or whatever you call it, I've got a crack in it, I think, when I ran into a wall. But it, uh, it's still there, and it's hardly noticeable, I mean, unless you look really closely at it. This is rated to 1,000 feet. 300 meters water resistance, so I have no concerns wearing it in a pool, ocean, hot tub. Obviously, make sure your, your timepiece is pressure tested. With that said, I mean, I wear mine everywhere. But I always, if I'm in, when I'm in salt water, I always bring it back and give it a fresh water bath just to make sure things don't gunk up. The uh, bracelet is arguably one of the most comfortable bracelets on the market. That was one thing in the past. The vintage Rolex Mariners, their bracelets are kind of, they were kind of uh, jingly jangly, I guess is a word for it. I kind of borrowed that, that word from Archie Luxury, but this is, this is very solid, and it's a tapered bracelet, so when you put it on your wrist, it feels very comfortable. One of the most comfortable bracelets I own. Actually, the most comfortable bracelet I own is the uh, Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 2, 42 millimeter, and then also my JJ LeCoult, Master Control, that bracelet's exceptionally comfortable. But yeah, this, this is very comfortable. It doesn't grab my arm hairs. The, uh, the loom on this is really nice. I'm going to have to do a, a loom shot here in a minute. Let me, let me get back to that. I'll turn the studio lights off when we get to that. We'll do a loom shot. Obviously, it is a screw-down crown, and it's got crown guards. See those things right there? Something that you may not really notice, but it's there. What those may do is possibly better prevent the crown from hitting something and breaking off. <laughs> you know, if you're, 
if if you've been having a good time, you know, you had a few drinks, you're walking really fast or something, and you you hit the side of your watch on a on a uh, on something hard, you know, those crown guards may better protect it. Now, as far as the case finishing, like one would expect from Rolex, it's exceptional. Obviously, this does show scratches, which is fine. I mean, I wear it everywhere. You know, I didn't buy this to just be, dude, I get a Rolex, man. I didn't do that. I bought it to wear it everywhere. So, it does show scratches. The bracelet has a brush finish. The case has a polish finish. And you can see there, I got scratches all over it, man. But, I mean, that's part of it. You know, if you're going to wear a watch, wear it. You know, don't worry about the scratches. Some people do, and they never wear their watch. They wear a, a freaking... Uh, smartwatch or something i mean i wear a smartwatch too when i'm working out but that's the only time you know i'm always wearing a an automatic or manual wine watch the rest of the time it's got the rolex logo on the crown obviously the uh the uh, indices are they're i think they're pretty sure they're hand laid and they've got white gold uh the bezel has some uh some platinum in it which is really cool and one of the nicest features about this, and you can see here the, the inside of the deployant, not deployment, but deployant clasp is very smooth. Feels really good on your wrist. But this has glide lock. See right there, I've kind of got it pushed out a little bit. I'm not going to adjust it within this video because I've got it just like I like it. But you can make micro adjustments using the glide lock on this, which makes this bracelet one of the best bracelets on the market today, if not, if not the best bracelet. So check out my other video where I demonstrate using glide lock. This piece, because it's black on black, there's no date, the symmetry, everything is perfect. Look at that flat dial, just looks really nice. You can wear this with a swimsuit, you can wear this with a suit, you could wear it with whatever. It's comfortable. I wear this thing everywhere. Super comfortable. The drawback to the Submariner and, and not, not as much so today as it was in the past, but, you know, Rolex, you, you can hardly walk in any authorized dealer and find watches in stock now. There's a perceived shortage. I don't know, really know what's driving that. That's a topic for other videos. But the, uh, in the past, people, this watch kind of had an unfair stigma, and that was because a lot of people didn't really even know watches. They knew the brand name Rolex, and they thought that would make them look cool, and they knew Submariner. You know, this is probably the most recognizable wristwatch in the world. And for that reason, you got a lot of people that buy these that are just, they're just not cool people. You know, they're trying to act like they've made it, and they, and they uh, you know, they buy a Rolex, and it's got to be a Submariner. And they get the no date, like I did. They get the no date because <laughs> they couldn't afford the date. Well, and that's, that's the perception, at least. The reality is, is that the no date is actually a more desirable piece than the, uh, than the date, the Submariner date. The reason is, you don't have the date window with that Cyclops that sticks up. It just looks tacky. Some people like the Cyclops. I don't. And for that reason, when I bought this, I was looking at the, uh, the they also had the Hulk, which is the green Submariner, but it had a date. If they had had a Hulk no date, I might have picked that up. But then again, I think in the long haul, I don't think you can go long wrong with black or white dials. And for that reason, I think this right here is currently and will always remain probably the most iconic wristwatch in the world. You know, the black on black, no date, clean dial, um, you know, obviously an in-house movement developed by Rolex. You know, this, there are no corners cut on this. And it's 40 millimeters, so for most people, 40 millimeters is probably going to be great. I've found with the 7.5 inch wrist that I have, if I go below 39 millimeters, the wristwatch starts to look a little bit too small on my wrist. So for me, with a 7.5 inch wrist, I go between 39 and 42. Once I get over 42, it looks a little bit big. You know, I do have a 44 uh, millimeter Panerai Luminor. Sometimes you want to wear a big watch, also the Breitling Super Avenger. But most of the time, I think that 40 for most wrist is probably the perfect size. And, you know, this right here, just from it, everything about this, about this watch is perfect. 
and obviously the water resistance. I mean, take this thing, I don't know why I would be a thousand feet below the water, but if I was, you know, there's a good possibility that, that this would probably survive that depth and maybe even a little bit more, who knows. But, uh, you know, obviously this has been featured in movies, not this particular reference, because it's the newer, one of the newer references, but, you know, James Bond helped to make uh, the Rolex Mariner famous. And, uh, you know, but again, you know, the, the downside of this, of this particular watch, is that, uh, again, it attracts a lot of the wrong people. At least it did in the past. I don't know if it does as much so now, because I think those people have moved on to, to other things. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the only thing that may deter some people from the Rolex Mariner is just, you know, feeling like if they wear it, that they're just trying to be like, you know, some sort of wannabe because there were a lot of people that bought the Samariner for that reason. So if that's the case, you know, you may want to look at, uh, you may want to look at some, some less uh, common offerings like the, like the Rolex Milgauss or the, uh, you know, that's one that's kind of under the radar. Also the Explorer, you know, the Rolex Explorer, maybe an Oyster Perpetual, but, Again, I do think, you know, all things considered, I do think that the Rolex Mariner is the most iconic and most, uh, well, obviously the most recognizable, the most iconic, and just the most well-rounded timepiece in the world. Because, I mean, you, again, you can wear it with swim trunks, you can wear it with a suit. Um, you know, it's, the only problem is, you know, certain areas you know when you're when you're traveling abroad and all that you may not want to wear it again because it is so easily recognizable you know and for that reason i would you know highly encourage everyone to uh, you know to know your surroundings be situationally aware because that is one downside to this piece is that it is uh you know easily recognizable but let's do that loom shot i was promising y'all and uh let's see i'm gonna I'm going to turn off my lights here and close this door. Let me, let me do that. Alexa, turn green screen off. Oh yeah, look at that. The loom on this is incredible. And what's funny when I purchased this from the authorized dealer, they said, oh, it's, you know, one of the things about this Samariner 114060 is that it was a blue instead of a green loom. And sometimes it kind of looks green. Sometimes it kind of looks blue. <laughs> so if you're, if you're expecting a blue blue and you feel like you, you didn't buy like a, like a real watch, that's not the case. It, it's blue, but it's not, it's not blue blue like, you might have been expecting if you hadn't seen one in person. But the loom on this is great, highly legible. You know, I will say the best loom that I have is my Panerai Luminor and my Ulysse Narden uh, Maxi Marine Diver. But the loom on the Samariner is great. I mean, it really is. It's easy to see. And see that little pip over there I was telling you I cracked? Even though I cracked it, it's still fine. It's just a hairline crack in it. But uh, let's turn those lights back on and continue this discussion. Alexa, turn green screen on. Okay, so I got my lights back on. Yeah, just a just a good good timepiece. Obviously, deployant clasp. I mean, I like it. I, I really do like it a lot. And it's uh, again, things are like everything else. Things are hard to find, but. This is, uh, you know, this is something I'm, I'm glad that I, it was on my list and I'm glad I got it. I think it was around 2013 when I bought it. But, uh, you know, one of those things that, you know, everybody needs at least one stainless steel Rolex. And I, and I don't think the, uh, you know, some people like the two tones. I'm kind of mixed when it comes to two tones. Obviously, I don't like a solid white, I don't like a solid yellow gold just because I think it's too blingy. I like this because it's stainless steel, man. It's a, it's a tool watch. You know, you can do pretty much whatever in it while you're wearing it and not really have to worry about it. But tell me what you think below. I mean, what, 
what attracts you to the Rolex Mariner, what makes you stray away from the Rolex Mariner. Comment below and check out all my videos. I've created a series called, uh, well, it's Time Pieces for Tomorrow. And you can go to timepiecesfortomorrow.com and watch all my videos. But, uh, you know, just a lot of watch collecting videos, watch discussions. I want to do some live shows and, uh, you know, talk about, talk about time pieces. I mean, you know, these, these things, you know, a lot of people are like, dude, it doesn't have a date on it. You know, what is it? You know, watch collecting is a very, it is a very complex addiction. I mean, there's, there's a lot more to a timepiece than this, than just the, oh, it has a date. It doesn't have a date. Does it use a battery or is it automatic or is it manual wine? There's so many different things out there. And we'll get into that in future videos. You know, the types of collectors, you know, what people, what attracts people to a certain timepiece. You know, and what, what might someone want to do? You know, maybe you're just getting into collecting timepieces. You know, what might you want to do as far as adding? You know, what, what should you add first and why? And then after you've added that, what should be next on the list? You know, there's, there's a lot of different, you know, this is just a very basic piece. I mean, it has no date. It tells the time, but it's waterproof. You can wear it pretty much anywhere. It's got excellent loom, as we saw. And I mean, it's got in-house movement. Hard to beat. But, you know, then I've got other time pieces that are manual wine. You know, you got you to gotta wind it yourself. And then I've got some that have power reserve complication. I've got some that have a chronograph complication. I still need a moon phase. At the time of filming this, I don't have a moon phase. So, you know, it's, it's a very, very interesting hobby. Very, uh, very ad addictive as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below. Uh, tell me what you think. What would you like to see next? What are your questions? You know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you're a young professional and you're looking for the, f the best first wristwatch and your budget is X amount. Shoot a comment below and I'll see if I can provide some, uh, some recommendations for you. Thanks for your viewership and be sure to subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash iRixGuy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.